Hi there, it's Joe the CRM Chap here and we're back with a new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL400. This is the exam for developers who are looking to validate their skills in working with or extending out the Power Platform. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how we can process events from Microsoft Dataverse using uh, a particular Azure service known as Azure uh, Service Bus. So this will be ideal for situations where maybe you've got a lot of transactions coming out of your Dataverse environment each day and you need to do some sort of uh, asynchronous uh, processing of those events. Maybe you need to send them off into different sort of destinations based on the type of updates that's taking place. Um, maybe you just need to make sure you've got that protection in case you're back-end services do uh, fall over for whatever reason. Uh, for whatever reason. Uh, these are really good scenarios for potentially looking at Azure Service Bus. So first things first, we need to actually get the resource that we want to work with set up in the Azure portal. So I'm just going to go onto my second tab up here. I'm going to create just a brand new, or I think I've got an existing resource group actually we can use. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to create a new marketplace resource on here. I'm going to search for Azure Service Bus. Should find it if I search for it, hopefully. Yep, there it is, Service Bus. Hit on the Create button. Uh, I'm just going to select uh, this subscription over here. Uh, I will need to create a new resource group, actually. So let me just try this one. Call it that. Uh, I'm just going to call this uh, PL400 uh, sample. And I'll just use today's date just to make sure it's nice and unique. Okay, UK South, keep it local, uh, and then for the purposes of this demo, the, and in most cases, you can probably get away with either basic or standard for uh, for your particular service bus. So we're going to select basic as the option there, review and create that, and then just create it down there. And that'll take just a few minutes now to deploy out, so we'll just give it a moment. So that's all deployed out successfully, so I'm going to click on to go to resource now. Uh, and the first thing we want to do is, um, what we've got here is effectively a namespace for our service bus. We need to actually create the queue that's going to receive the messages that we're going to send out from Dataverse. So I click on queues at the bottom down here. Just going to create a new uh, queue. I'm just going to call this uh, PL400 account queue as an example. You can see I've got various options on here that I can define. So for example, I can set the mass maximum amount of time I want my message to live in the queue before it's sort of automatically removed or dead lettered. Uh, specify lock duration, partitioning, uh, different advanced settings which may be useful for your scenario. F for the purpose of this demo, we're just going to accept the defaults as they are. Um, and then likewise, it will take just a few seconds just for the queue to uh, be pushed out. And we can see there it is there straight away. The next step we need to do is that, is that we need to now get the um, a connection string to this queue that we can then hook up to. So we do this by going into the queue, clicking on shared access policies. Uh, no policy has been set up on yet, so I'll just call this uh, Dataverse. Uh, and in this case, uh, we're going to grant probably um, manage privileges, so basically comprehensive privileges across the entire queue. It may be just for your specific scenario that you just need the ability just to do send instead, so just um, curtail the uh, privileges to suit your specific scenario. I was going to go off and create a SAS policy. If we now click into this, I should see that we've got a uh, connection string. That we can grab. So I'm just going to grab that. I'm going to pop it onto a separate screen. And now we've got everything set up and ready to go in Azure. So the next step is that we now need to define the connection from our Dataverse environment into the Service Bus queue and, and define, okay, well, what, what tables, what events are we um, wanting to send out into the queue for? So we handled all of this via a tool which, if you've been watching the previous videos, you should be familiar with already, uh, the good old uh, plugin registration tool. So I'm just going to log into the um, my data first environment just so we can um, um, start to get things set up. Go through the usual multi-factor and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, so it's going to be the dev test that we want. Okay, and then from here we can see we've got our various different assemblies in here. So we would typically use the plugin registration tool uh, for that purpose alone. But if we were to expand the register option up here, we can see we've got a few additional options. And the one that we're interested in exploring in today's video is the register new service endpoint option. This is going to let us set up the connection to the service bus queue that we've just provisioned out into Azure. And it's quite a nice uh, little wizard. All we need to do is just uh, 
copy and paste in the connection string that we grabbed from the Azure portal, hit the next button, and it'll automatically figure out uh, all the sort of details that we want to sort of fire out into our particular uh, into our particular queue. The only setting that we do just need to change is the um, the message format um, so that we can more easily read it. We're going to send it out into sort of a JSON format for our data. Um, we can also send out uh, specific information about our user account by selecting the option down here, user ID. That might be useful if we wanted to dig into who's done what particular operation and things like that. But other than that, that's looking all good, so I'm going to hit the save button. That should then close down. If we scroll down to the bottom, we should see that we've got a new service endpoint. Now, when this is set up, it, it behaves very similarly to a plugin because if we see if we right click the option on here we can see that we've got the same kind of actions that we can do as if we you know if you know they're also applicable to a plugin so for example we can set up our steps we can set up our images you know and this is one of the benefits of this you know we can work with our service endpoints in a familiar manner and the types of things that we can do from a triggering standpoint that we can do from plugins is going to also be supported as part of our service plus endpoint so in this case what we want to do is we want to set up a new um, step and we're just going to send out basically for every um, new account record that's created in our environment, we're going to send it out into our particular um, into our particular um, service bus queue. The thing to remember is that our service bus execution mode must always be asynchronous, um, and we and we set the flag on here so that um, our system jobs doesn't get um, filled up with lots of um, with lots of rows that have no real sort of useful information in them. You know, if it's succeeded, then that's all good. We don't really care above and beyond that. So that's all looking okay. So I click on register new step. If I wanted to as well, I could maybe include um, a post image as well on this. So we'll just do this just for, for demo purposes. So because this create, uh, we'll only have access to our post image. So I'm not going to be too concerned about the precise details I enter on here. I'm just going to select just some random fields, maybe. So maybe just, you know, address one, uh, maybe address two, uh, currency created on, you know, bank and uh, business type, let's say. Let's register that. With that, now we can actually just test this, this um, that this actually works and we get something out into our service bus queue. So let's jump back into our um, Dataverse environment. I'm just going to jump into my uh, PO400 app. Uh, which I'm pretty sure has the accounts table in already, but if not, we can very quickly add it in. Yep, there it is, like so. So just give it a second to load, and then we'll uh, create a new um, account. So we can see we've got some existing accounts there. So let's just maybe create a new one for, um, uh, we'll call this uh, Wingtip Toys, maybe. Give it just a generic account number, maybe just populate a few few details on here again just so we can uh, see uh, how they come out in the particular um, service bus queue okay that should be good for now uh, I'm gonna hit the save button good. now because this is an asynchronous operation it's going to trigger the um, as alluded to already the um, a system job behind the scene to process that so Effectively, the user is not going to see or necessarily even care um, what's going on behind the scenes. They, in fact, they won't even be able to tell because it's not being processed in a synchronous manner. Um, because we have um, set the option down here to delete the jobs, um, we we may not be able to see it. It may have just vanished completely. Um, so instead, what we can do is go into our um, queue and we can see that straight away we actually do have a message in there. So effectively it's worked as expected the system job has kicked off and we could now if we wanted to maybe just do a bit more um, um, sort of um, analysis in terms of what we've um, what we've received so we've got it within the portal the service bus explorer that we can use to basically just um, quite literally because that's, that's the term have a peek at um, what we have sort of received from our particular queue in this case, I'm just going to perform a destructive read to basically get the message that's come out. And then from here, I can see there's my JSON on there, including all the details about my particular request. So in that particular format, it's not going to be too readable. So if you just give me a second, I'm going to open this up into, into Notepad++ and just give it a format, and then we can take a look at it. Okay, so I'll just drag this onto the screen on here. And here's what we get out. 
so um as you're reviewing these various different um um key value sort of values that are coming out of on here this will look fairly familiar if you've had experience working with plugins before and effectively you know we are getting the same information that we would typically interrogate as part of our context in working with the plugin so we can see for example we we know the message that has been fired on we know the uh, the business unit details we can get information about input parameters so in this case the the columns that have gone into the particular transaction um you know um in other useful other useful information points that you know typically if we were working in a plugin we'd be very used to sort of working with so this makes this um potentially this option quite nice if you're wanting to have that same type of experience maybe you want to push out your message into let's say an azure function app or something like that um once it's in the azure function app you can work with it in much the same ways if you would um uh, would do within a plugin as well and we can see down here as well that we also get our um, images as well so we can see there are the different columns that we define down there uh, and if it was an update or a delete operation then potentially we could also get our pre entity images as well which is really nice so service bus queues are, and um, service endpoints are a really great tool that you can use again think of them as being um, you know something that you can leverage when you've got these quite sort of complex batch processing activities that you need to perform alongside Dataverse you need to get data out into the system in a sort of processed logical way you need the ability to be able to get the same type of details that you'd expect from a plugin um, and also have some have the ability to easily um, send data to where it needs to be. These are all great scenarios for using Azure Service Bus alongside Dataverse. So what it leads me to say is thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful and indeed the series as part of your exam preparation. Uh, please give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Um, check out the and uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, Trying to do these sort of videos fairly regularly. Um, yeah, so thanks again. Cheers. Bye.